Welcome back to Star Trek Online. Today we're going to do the vault. So we have to go and talk to Pishka. Okay, we got our fighter all set up. Should be no problem. Oh, we won't be using the shuttle. I'll pause this till it comes in. Sometimes this takes a little while. There we are. Obviously, this station isn't as abandoned as Intel suspected. Sensors are reading several Riemann ships in the area, and that's just the ones that we can spot. That station is immense! It must have taken an incredible amount of manpower and technology to build it. It's almost the size of a small moon. Sensors are reading a sophisticated tachyon detection network, as well as several patrolling vessels. For an abandoned station, this facility certainly has a lot of activity. My people are experts at stealth technology. If we want to approach unseen, we must avoid confrontation and find a way to evade or jam their sensor grid. We must assume that if we engage the ships here, they'll notify whoever is left on the station and it may become difficult to find an entry point. Hmm. 
All right, give me a minute on this. I gotta set this up. Okay, I think we're all set. The Remans have been alerted to our presence. I think I was locked on to anything. So I guess we're supposed to sneak through, huh? This asteroid is unusually large, and it's clearly been mined. Uh, it was probably I remember. used for raw construction materials, like most of the debris here. This particular asteroid contains pergium, titanium, and uranium. It was probably tractored from a nearby system and brought here to construct hull components and power systems. We could probably cut a piece from the asteroid with our weapons for further analysis. are all over this system. If we start a fight with one of the ships, we'll probably have to fight them all. And there's no telling how many are cloaked here. We have to go to the other two spots now? Huh. Yeah, they changed this up a little bit. Since I last did it. This vessel was refitted for asteroid mining. Apparently, a containment failure in the engine core led to a massive radiation surge. The engine went into emergency shutdown, but all of the couplings and injectors were burned out. The crew probably died due to instant radiation burns. It looks like the vessel was stripped for parts and left derelict. This satellite is a communications booster for their short-range worker shuttles. Fortunately for us, it's still active. Unfortunately, it's heavily encrypted. Traffic analysis shows that the network routes its communications through a series of nodes at the station's dorsal peaks. If we flood them with excessive signal, it could cause the network to be unable to handle any signal traffic, which would give us a brief window to slip in. The alerts wouldn't go off because the station would never get the signal. We'll still have to avoid the patrols and make sure we don't get too close to the station until we make the broadcast. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is a little different than the last time I came here. It's been a very long time. I used to just have to cut a chunk off the asteroid and follow it. Approaching the Tachyon grid perimeter. If we're detected by it, that will definitely alert the Remans. Station sensor hub jammed. The Remans are all over this system. up some unusual energy readings. We'll need to explore the accessible interior areas and see what we can find. Looks like there's another access conduit across from us. We'll have to think three-dimensionally in here. Sensor readings are also picking up a few scattered life signs. Doors are a massive set of interior bulkhead doors. They're segmenting the different parts of the base. Possibly a safety measure in case something went wrong in one of the central areas. Access appears to be controlled by use of security keys. We can disable it if we can find a code block that matches part of a security key. This defense turret was hooked into part of the security network. There's a security code in its subsystem, code block 6750. The security key is on a rotation. Each code block matches a piece of one key. Key in the appropriate code when the rotation matches to it. Trying a code on the wrong rotation will probably invalidate that code, so be careful with the timing. Is this new as well? I don't remember having to sit here and wait for this to change. I have to wait until the input key text turns green? fly around and look for stuff. Microgravity storage containers. Since this interior space has no artificial gravity, they're just left to float here. There's an assortment of construction materials and personal effects, including a personal access code key. 
That could be it. This block of empty residences includes a code key, block 9904. What well, now we gotta guess? I'm reading life signs in some of these living quarters. Interesting. generator, provisions, and medical supplies. That's it. Medical supplies, provisions, fuel generator. Security key is on a rotation. That's it. Well, <laughs> microgravity storage crates. Mostly construction supplies. No weapons or unusual energy signatures. There's still power in most of the station. Some of these conduits are damaged. Keep an eye out for energy discharges. Above us, that's a Borg sphere. 
The Tal Shiar must have used this base as a storage facility and research area for Borg technology. The Borg sphere is dormant, like it's been put to sleep. It's not the source of the strange readings that long-range scans detected. Looks like the sphere is hooked into part of the local systems network. We should be able to exit through the other doors now. Probably a safety precaution to keep them locked. Quiet in this area, too quiet. This is disturbing. We're looking at a facility used to build Thaleron weapons. If the Remans have infiltrated this base, they may be trying to secure those weapons. Ah, so our intruder finally arrives at the heart of the matter. Have you seen all that you came to see, little spy? Does it really matter? Call me Obasek, if a name is that important to you. That should be obvious. I intend to make use of this station to further my agenda. Your presence, however, is a bit more... curious. I expect that you are operating under the Shroud of Empress Sela, whether you realize it or not. Doubtless you have discovered the source of those readings. Understand that I have little desire to unleash this sort of destruction, but my hand is forced. The Riemann people will only be liberated if we are able to make a clear and decisive stand against the Romulans. The technology of this station will allow us to do so. I am prepared to take that risk. I strongly suspect the Federation and the Klingons will not have any desire to test our metal once all Riemann ships are armed with Thaleron weapons. Regardless, this will all be over soon enough. My plans are for liberation, not conquest. I am not a Romulan, and I do not allow passion to rule my intellect. I understand the risks of my actions. While there will be strife and hardship in the future, at least it will be a future that the Riemann people are free to face for themselves. I will deal with the future when it arrives. For me, there is no tomorrow until my people are free. However, I respect your commitment to your position. It's a shame we are at cross-purposes. I am afraid our time is at an end. My associates have already finished loading the Thaleron weapons that we need, and I have other operations to manage. I think we both know what happens now. May your death be quick and valorous. <laughs>
door locks. Ship is under attack. Hull integrity below 75%. to alert the KDF to Obisex plan. Once we are clear of the station interior, we can send a message by using the subspace booster satellite. Then we will have little choice but to keep the Remans occupied until reinforcements can arrive. I suggest evasive action when that occurs. Though you may feel otherwise, I do not believe today is a good day to die. Well, that was a little different than I remember, but it was pretty cool. I like the changes. I probably did it a while ago. It's been a very long time since I last played. Oh, these load screens. Jeez. All right, gonna pause. All right. We are now in the micro nebula. IKS Azitbur is signaling us. They're going to engage the Riemann ship, but they want us to take care of the fighters and plasma torpedoes. Explosion! Probably the Medaleron weapons carried aboard the ship. We are going to leave the system under high warp to draw off any reinforcements that might come looking. Suggest you return to Klingon space. You know, it may only seem different to me because... This is probably the first time in about six years that I've done this with a Klingon. I usually do it with a Federation character. Usually an engineer as well, so that's probably another thing.
Wait, where did it bring me? Um, to go to the first city, why did it bring me here? city. Excellent. We need to learn more about the conflict between Ubisek and the Romulans. If Sila is stupid enough to wage war against our own vassals, we might be able to use the conflict to our advantage. You were right, however, to destroy the Thaleron weapons. They are the tools of a coward! I would rather look my enemy in the eye as he dies. Klingon intelligence will be working to decode the list of possible targets you acquired from the base's databanks. The next step is to find out why the Remans want to attack these locations. Congratulations, Lieutenant Commander. Intelligence has decoded the list of Riemann targets that you recovered from the vault. I want you to infiltrate one of these targets and determine why Obisek would attack it. The Vahar system is still technically part of the Romulan Star Empire, but Ferengi speculators have moved in and the Empress has done nothing to remove them. The beak-eared little money grubbers have reopened their minds and are now doing business with anyone with Latinum. You will go to the Vahar system under the pretense of negotiating a trade deal for the Empire. Talk to Madron, the operator of the mines. Convince him to allow you access. Find out all you can. Once we know why Obisek and the Remans are targeting these mines, then we will know how to proceed. Mine enemy. 
Do I hat tip to enemy mine? I'm gonna set up my ship again. Um, alright, be right back. Okay, I'm back. Something weird though. I noticed. Well, maybe not. It's not weird, but. They used to give you a stack of these. And then when you wanted more, you'd have to go back and do the mission again. Now it appears that they're infinite. Apparently they scale with you as well. I think that's what that means. Yeah, we'll see. Anywho. Let's go track the target. Mine enemy. Enemy. Melanie Dion and her minions may have sworn fealty to the Klingon Empire, but we did not. I've been knee for no one. Leave now or be destroyed. Private property! No solicitors, beggars, or Klingons allowed! So happy to meet you. 
Perhaps you are in the market for some high-quality magnesite? Hmm? We have the finest ore in the quadrant. On behalf of the miners and residents here, I'm more than happy to welcome you to our home. Please, transport to the surface. Unfortunately, the large amount of extremely pure magnesite ore in the core of our little world will interfere with your sensors. For safety reasons, I must insist that you use the transporter signal enhancers that I have installed at my own expense. Also, I know Klingons are fond of their battle parties, but could you please restrict the number of crew you bring down to the surface? My people here aren't used to strangers, and you wouldn't want to disrupt their work, would you? Did you need something? It's a long story. After the destruction of Romulus, I joined a group of colonists looking for a new place to settle. We chose to form a new agrarian community, on Viranaut, a pastoral world on the edge of Romulan space. Our colony was attacked and destroyed. I managed to evade the attackers and get off-world with a small group of people. My luck ran out here, and I've been stuck ever since. I'm a biochemist by trade. I specialize in hemocyanin, a division of hematology working with copper-based blood. On Viranaut, I handled a lot of issues related to food compatibility and local biochemistry. These days, I mostly handle minor medical issues and nutritional deficiencies for the people living here. I can't afford passage off of this move. I've managed to stay out of debt, but I don't know how long that will last. This whole mining facility is nothing but strange. That Ferengi, Madra, rides everyone hard to make a profit. But just when it looks like things will get too bad, he turns around and does something generous. Folks have occasionally disappeared, and not by leaving on a ship. People here for weeks or months will suddenly vanish. People talk about seeing strange things, or being kept out of parts of the mine by the guards. There's something deeper in those mines. I'm sure of it. On behalf of everyone on this forsaken rock, let me be the first to welcome you to Hathara. As you can see, we don't have time for pleasantries. And I'm not sharing my Tranya stash with you. So, 
why don't we skip the chit-chat and get down to business? Unfortunately, I cannot call this mine my own. I'm just a middleman. Out of the goodness of my heart, I help the residents here pass on the products of their hard work to commercial entities such as yourself. The minuscule transaction fee and trade tariff I keep to offset my expenses is figured into the unit cost of the ore. <sighs> my operation has become one of the best in the area because of the high demand for my services from both sides. I provide the best mining equipment and supplies in the sector to the miners, while my customers get competitive pricing on the ore they need. Really? Suit yourself. Just remember, I have an exclusive contract to export magnesite ore from this moon. If you try to cut me out of your deals, you'll regret it. I'm sorry. I, I really can't talk at the moment. I have to finish a survey of the area so the miners can start work on a new mine sh As much as I'd appreciate someone else to lug around this heavy equipment, it's all very delicate. And I'd only trust a capable scientist to help me. I don't have time to talk to you right now. I need to repair this drill so I can make a living. Not unless you know an engineer who'd be willing to take a few moments out of their busy schedule to help me fix this hunk of junk. I can't talk to anyone. I'm on the run. And if those thugs see me talking to you, then you'll be in danger too. I need someone who's not afraid of a fight. There's a group here that's beating and stealing from us. Madrin doesn't do anything to stop it. For all I know, he's getting a cut of everything they take. They're making life miserable for all of us. Would you be willing to help? There's a group of bullies that have been stealing from us. If we don't give them what they want, they beat us. I had a friend. All he was trying to do here was feed his family. Be a good man. He had an old bottle of ale. He said it was from the home world. One of those thugs wanted it. Now, my friend is dead. I'm too weak to stop them, I know that. And now I have my friend's children to feed in addition to my own. But if someone were to teach them a lesson, this camp would be a better place for all of us.
thank you. Those guys have been giving everyone a lot of trouble. These thugs are part of a larger group that operates deep inside the Magnesite mine. They control the lower levels, and no one who goes down there uninvited ever comes back. I don't know what's so important down there that's worth hurting us to protect it. Maybe if you went down there, you could get some answers. in buying any magnesite? Or are you just here to cause trouble? Because if it's the latter, I know someplace you can start a little ruckus. Huh? There's a gang that controls the bottom levels of the mine. They won't even let me in there. Previously, I allowed them to keep their little kingdom in exchange for information. But lately, they've been more trouble than they're worth and the intel they're feeding me is useless. Honestly, who doesn't know about the green invasion of the fairy space? What do you want? This area is restricted. Only people my friends and I like me enter. And I don't like you! You don't belong here. And I'm done talking with you. Leave now! I'm suffering.
see him, Commander. You are out of line. With all due respect, sir, there is a difference between protecting the Empire from her enemies and provoking... There is much here you do not understand, Janik. The Remans need to know their place. As do you. I will not forget your insubordination, Commander. The Tall Shi'ar has no place for officers who cannot follow orders. I'll be in the command center. Colonel, they were civilians. Their blood is on our hands. Get used to it. There will be more. Speaking of which, why don't you clean out the brig before you become a resident there? I almost feel sorry for you, but I have my own neck to worry about. I'll be joining you in there soon enough. If Hakib has his way, we all will. Enough! I surrender! I value my life more than the Tal Shiar's secrets. I'll tell you anything you want to know. But first, you must tell me why you are here, and what you want. Do the Remans know about this base? Impossible! Only the leadership of the Tal Shiar know we're here. 
The Empress herself couldn't find us. I don't believe you, but it makes no difference. This is not a military installation. We listen and record here. Nothing more. There are many targets that those green and scum will find much more tempting. Are you sure you want to end things like this? Because if you did, remember, I have an exclusive contract. And what's it to you? This is a rough area of the quadrants, you know, and they're good neighbors. If you're not easily embarrassed, their cameras and listening devices are everywhere. I haven't had a single problem with Orions or Herogen since they moved in. And it 
doesn't hurt that I acquired the odd bit of information here and there. I'm a businessman, and information is big business. Unfortunately, no. I'll admit, I was trying to find out, but their systems were locked down tight. I'm sure whatever it was had to be big news. Everyone was on edge. Janik and Hakiv were barely speaking, and I once heard Hakiv mumbling something about orders. Some... someone's been pulling his strings, but I don't know who. I do know the Tal Shiar takes security very seriously. If you manage to pull any files from their system, you can expect them to be heavily encoded. Trust me on that. I speak from experience. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go talk a hundred Romulans into digging a new mine to replace the one you destroyed. My profit margin for this month is ruined. Okay, I think uh, two episodes is good for that. Finish enemy mine, or mine enemy. Okay, we got a decipher. We'll do, we'll continue uh, mine enemy in the next episode. If you made it this far, thanks for coming and watching, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.